Here we go. All right. In five. What's up, Brandon? How Why you doing, are you buddy? Yelling at me. I don't know because I miss you. Stop yelling at me. I haven't talked to you in like ten minutes. Five seconds. We literally just stopped talking, and then counted down from five. And then I and then you started again. talking again. I got so excited <laughs> that we are doing episode forty-two, the Jackie 42, Robinson episode. The Jackie Robinson episode. It has to be the Jackie Robinson episode. I There's think so. no other number forty-two that's better than that, right? I mean, Can't Mariano Rivera was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he was. But it's not retired because of Mariano. No, no but he's right. the last player to wear number 42. Yes, he is. And they let him do that. Because he had it on time. before, just like, Mo, just like Mo Vaughn. Yeah. Good stuff. I'm Mike Morazzo. That's Brandon Silvera. Welcome to episode 42 of the Handcuffs and Sawdust podcast. Woo! Seems like we just did this yesterday. I literally like just a week ago. <laughs> it was like a week ago, and then it feels edit, like yesterday. Edit and then edit YouTube I've, stuff, and then edit YouTube stuff. It's like four days in a row of releasing podcast material because it goes right. Tuesday pre-show, Wednesday regular episode, Thursday pre-show on YouTube, Friday full show on YouTube. It's four days of handcuffs and sawdust podcast, just coming right at you, and multiple medias. Okay. <laughs> Brandon's so excited. I'm, I'm trying to think of a way to turn that into a joke because it is coming at you, but not like that. Okay. Keep that joke to yourself. I already made it. You would have to edit it out. <laughs> is it in your head? I just made it. <laughs> coming. Oh, it, didn't, it didn't sound like a it's joke. It's like what? ejaculation, Mike. Oh, here we go. There we go. You happy? You made me spell it out for the people. So what are we eating tonight? Because you wanna you wanna go eat. I don't know. I told and you. Your wife is gonna order you some mandarin. She ordered surprise. me something off of DoorDash, and the last thing I said to her before I came upstairs was, "I trust Let's your make judgment." Make sure it's edible. Because have you seen so the new we'll see. um, Uber Eats commercial where they deliver anything? Yes. Yeah. And the guy who plays cousin Greg on Succession is eating the tape because it mm -hmm. came from Uber Eats. <laughs> yep. Or Stifler's mom eating the lipstick. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. I forgot yeah, that. It was, it was a Super Bowl commercial. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so maybe you'll get something that you can actually eat. I'm hoping. And I've invited you to eat it while we record, like when I eat I my goldfish crackers. I don't want to watch myself eat on the monitor. So don't look at the monitor? What do you, you want me to just sit here and just... There you go. Yeah, what the heck? No one will care. There's like three people that actually watch this shit. 34. 34. You're four of them. I don't know what you're talking about. I bet you all of your email addresses, all your plethora <laughs> of email addresses all have YouTube <laughs> accounts, and I guarantee you you're watching it on all of them. You might I be that's, wrong. I think that's why I don't get to see the back-end numbers. <laughs> I'd start yeah. looking at stuff, and I'd start unraveling your plan. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was a good week um, somewhat in law enforcement. We, we only lost two officers. Yeah, it's a step uh, and forward. We'll get, and we'll get to that. Yes, one week in the future, we will have nobody on that list, and that will be a We good, may not be alive for that. Probably not the way the world's going right now. But here's hoping. Here's I'm, trying to, I'm trying to not go too depressing too early. <laughs> I've got nothing depressing this week, so there you go. All right, cool. I don't no think deaths, I anything really no all that bad, sad. No bad, dead stories. Yeah, I got none of that stuff. I only lay that on you every once in a while. And it's just like all at once. <laughs> it's like I back up a dump truck of like yeah. sad emotional shit and just dump it right on like, you. Like, all right, everybody stand by. <laughs> Here Mike's it comes. had a sad week. It's like in The Sopranos when they just dump the garbage at the guy's yeah. parking lot because he was no longer 
pain. That's like I was joking with people. I'm like, moderation is for cowards, and that's how you are with sadness. Right. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm just giving you all of it at one time. All Why should I at once? carry all of that at once? No, share that emotional baggage. I'm a sharer and a giver. You are. You're a giver. Yeah. I'm a, gi- I'm a giver. <laughs> Careful now. Uh, so, uh, speaking of work weeks, you're, uh, you're the one that needs to tell me how yours went first. Okay. Well, it was two days. Hey, I had a two-day week. I had a two-day work week. It was really me nice. Because I took the first two days off to work in the kitchen. Doing all nice. the demo. And then I went back to work, and there really wasn't much going on. And uh, Mike's walked away from the microphone, and, oh, he put down the headphones. And now I can say whatever I want, and he won't know about it until he watches this. So I'll do what he did. I'll, uh, this episode of the Handcuffs and Sawdust podcast brought to you by FullHouseWoodworking.com. Got it. You did it. All right. I thought we'd throw an advertisement in there for you, but I had forgotten to plug in the other computer, and I didn't want to yeah, shit crap happens. out on me. Um, no, there really wasn't anything all that interesting this week. It was actually, actually very tame. So it was the last week of this uh, current shift. So everyone said our, uh, our goodbyes because I'm leaving the group and moving to a different part of the city with different days off. So instead of Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I have uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Starting today, we're recording on a Sunday. Sunday, so Monday, this is Tuesday. Technically, my Saturday. Okay. So, but the nice thing is that our uh, week starts on Sundays, so this is actually the day that the new shift starts. And I had yesterday off because I still had Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Wow! So I gained a day off. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> so I went from a five-day off weekend to a four-day off weekend, to then after this work week, I'm off for a week. Oh, you got, you're going to Colorado. Yep. So Which reminds fun. me, while we're on that calendar subject, you won't be able to, we won't be able to record next week, right? When do you leave? No. We leave yeah. Sunday. Okay, so and we our next recording day will like be the Sunday. 29th. The 29th. Maybe. <laughs> I have range day see. that day, out in the sun all day during the day for night guys, which is... You know, stupid, but whatever. And then I work. Yeah, we Monday, should be Tuesday, able to record so. the 29th. We get back late on the 28th. Okay. So we'll actually be coming home that day. Um. So we'll see. On the 28th. Yeah, well, we'll be coming home on the 29th. So we fly in, and we're gonna stay at my in-laws on the oh. 28th because we okay. get in late. Okay. And then in the morning of of the 29th, we will leave and drive back home. Okay. So. I don't know what day you go back to work, but... I go to the 30th. No. Well, yeah. that sucks. So if we don't record on the 29th, we won't record until the following, till, till June right. um, 6th. Next recording, TBD. Probably TBD. the 29th. I think I just, what I'm going to start doing is... I just don't want to make promises. <laughs> no, no. We'll start um, filling in the days we don't record with other episodes that have been released already. Oh, there we go. I just had to figure out how to do that. I have a lot of them saved, and I don't have some of them saved. So we'll see. All right. So uh, yeah, I really didn't have anything. No, we. uh, Oh, I I will talk about this because this is just the end of the show. Thank you very much. (laughs) Good night, everybody. (laughs) Good night. No, so because I was texting you about this, so uh, there was a robbery in in the city in which I work. And the armed security guard at the place that was robbed did not take too kindly to his uh, business that he protects being robbed. So he pulled out his gun and he shot a guy in the ass three times. You so shot me in gets, the ass. Yeah, yeah but it's the fleshy part. Hole. <laughs> yeah, just the, wasn't so much the hole, it was more the cheek. I brought, I brought you a gift. I brought you a donut. It's a donut. So you put you the know. pressure on the one side. <laughs> It kind of take the pressure off the other side. Um, so his buddies drop him off at a fire station in Palo Alto. Wait, the guy who got shot in the ass, who did the yeah. robbery. Yes. His buddies. His friends his treated him like a baby that they didn't want. Exactly. And dropped him and off at a firehouse. Yes. Knowing that they wouldn't get in trouble because they dropped him off at a firehouse. Yeah. You just kick him out of the car and like, hey, he needs help. So... 
They take him to a hospital. They take him to Stanford Hospital. The Stanford Hospital. Nice. Palo Alto. And, yeah. And it takes about five seconds for everybody to put together that, hey, this is probably the guy that robbed the place. So he is in custody for robbery. He has multiple warrants for robbery. but And multiple I mean, gunshots. Really, yeah. And multiple new holes in his body. Um, but here's the thing that I don't get. He's in custody. He's arrested. He is under arrest. He has a room, a private room to himself that is um, quite large. In this room, he has a 42-inch TV with cable. And they brought him these this tablet that's preloaded with movies and games and stuff that he can just fiddle fart with. And uh, I guess one of the tablets was not working correctly, so they brought him a new one. And he has access to a uh, cafeteria, like, 24-7. Like, apparently one night at midnight, he just, like, hit the button and was like, yeah, can I get some milk and cookies? And he got fucking milk and cookies. At midnight? At, like, midnight in his little hospital and, bed. And you told me that he was watching... The new Doctor Strange movie. Yeah, he was like watching the new Doctor How Strange movie. Is that even possible? I don't. I don't. Because I told you you should charge him again for pirating the movie. Well, I can't prove that he pirated it. If he's like being given this freaking tablet I, I, by the hospital, but then like these nurses come. Was he in watching and they that on the tablet the or the forty-two inch TV? He was watching it on the tablet while the forty-two okay. inch is still playing like another Marvel movie. I'm just sitting there, like, I, I'm like, I'm sitting here, like, we're in Bizarro World, like the again, what? I don't get it, because then even nurses come in and they're like mean mugging us, and they're like, oh, <laughs> sir, is it okay if I give you your antibiotics now? Okay, we're gonna give you something for that pain. Can you rate it on a scale of one to ten, with ten being the worst? And I'm just sitting here, like he, he just did a robbery, like, like he's being arrested on a real warrant for robbery. He has multiple other warrants for his arrest for robbery. Right. Pure shitbag. But let's just cater to him. Like, he's not a good person. And baby him. I'll, I'll tell him. That, uh, I will say this about him. Very respectful California. to me. Sorry. Very I'm respectful sorry. to me. Yes, California is horrible. And the more time that goes on, look, every time that we've gone out to Colorado, uh, my stepmom has tried to convince us to move out there. And the last time we entertained the idea, right? We're like, eh, it would be, you know, maybe go to yeah, ish. Didn't really take it too seriously. I'm not lying to you, dude. This week, I might actually look. You should. I mean, if nothing else is holding you guys to California and you can both find work in Colorado, makes sense to me. I just, I am. I, I, I'm almost at my wits in here. Like that on top of all the other crap that's been going on. I got to tell you, man, there are some days it is really hard to justify going to a job that could kill me every day. Like, yep. That, that's where I'm at. And I'm four years into a career. Yeah. You know, I had a conversation with my wife on the way home from work the other day. Uh, we had, I'll, well, I'll get to that, my part, but at some point I was telling her, I'm going to die and I should have retired 16 days ago. And she's like, instead of going, no, no, you should just retire then. She's like, oh, <laughs> okay. I'm like, whatever. Life insurance is paid up, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the response I was looking for. No, I mean, that's, I don't think people realize that like that's, you have people that for the last two years, right? Cause I would say beyond like before that, like, yes, there were people that were anti-police, but there's going to be, there, there's people that are anti-doctor, um, before all this stuff. I think there's more people that are anti-doctor now. Yeah. Um, but it was the vast minority and they were pretty quiet about it. And anytime they did speak up, they got kind of shouted down. Um, but dude, like the script is flipped. And like for the last two years, it has been nothing but shitting on people who are doing a job 
that protects the general public from some of the worst things in the world. Yeah. And and, and the and worst people in the world. Yeah. And at a moment's notice, going to work that day could kill you. It could be the last time it's you see your, as your family walking out the door. Right? Yep. And then people still spit all this hatred towards you. And it just, it blows my mind. Like, we're trying to be in this this new age, this woke culture is supposed to be like, oh, we're going to cater to everybody's needs and we're going to make everybody feel okay. Except for, like, cops. Like, th- we're going to shit on them still. If we're going to shit on them more... I just, I can't, I can't wrap my mind around that. And then when people talk about the broken justice system, which I think you and I can both agree that, yeah, it's broken, but it's not on the street cop side of things. It's not, in all honesty, it's not in the law enforcement side. I don't think so. Those of you that are pissed off about the justice system are pissed off on the judicial side because you have your car broken into and we find the guy and we arrest him and we take him to jail. And then because of the way the judicial system is set up, he's released before I even start the report. And let's just say a DA actually files on the case. He's going to get probation. He is not going to go to jail. He's going to go there. He's going to get released on his own recognizance. He's going to probably miss his court date, but let's say he shows up. He's going to plead to like a year's worth of probation. And he's going to be back out on the street. There is no consequence. There's no consequence anymore. Imagine like the only way that you can really draw this parallel is it's like imagine raising your kids, right? And you tell your kids, no, don't do this. And they do it. And then you tell them, no, 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 I said don't do that. And they do it again. You go, no, you don't do that. And they keep doing it, and you keep doing it. You keep you just go back and forth forever. They keep doing the thing that you told them not to do because there is no consequence. At some point, you have to hit them in the back of the head and go, hey, dummy, stop. Remember when I told you to not do that? If you continue to do this, you are going to be negatively affected. doesn't mean you have to actually put your hand on your kid because I know that freaks some people out. But... If you keep doing it, I'm going to take your toy away. Do it again. Boom. Toy gets taken away. There is an immediate consequence. Maybe you go into timeout. That's that's how I explain jail to my kids. It's adult timeout. And sometimes you need that. Adult timeout with all the newest Marvel movies and cookies and ice cream. Apparently. Jeez. Yeah. If you're going to go to jail, go to the hospital first. And if you're going to go to a hospital, go to Stanford. Good grief. Apparently. Okay, I've been I'll get on off the my Stanford, soapbox. <laughs> I've been on the Stanford campus. My so brother-in-law the last graduated time, from Stanford. Uh, the last time that I was at Stanford, I was at the Children's Hospital delivering presents for kids with cancer. Yeah, that's awesome. It was one so, of the things I suggested at the last job interview that they do um, at the Children's Hospital that they have in their town. Yeah, but... So. All right, I'll get off my soapbox about how pro-criminal the world is. Because it's not it's even true. just California, dude. It's not even no, just California. No, it's all over. It's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Granted, it's a little bit worse in California because it's such a big state and we're so visible. But it's just as bad anywhere else. Like the county I work in, you have to get caught with... Uh, a controlled substance or paraphernalia three times in a calendar year before the DA will even charge it. That's there's no consequence. There's that's no ludicrous consequence for anything. You could have methamphetamine on you, and you have no consequence. And they wonder why we have these issues in this country. We at least have our state's attorneys in Cook County. We used to have to call them for felony approval for drugs, for everything. They've now taken away uh, us having to call them for PCS, you know, possession of a controlled substance. We no longer have to call for felony approval. It's an automatic felony. We just charge them with it, and then they can't bond out, and then they go to Cook County Jail. 
even ours, which then they'll if, then they'll bond out from there. <laughs> so even ours, possession of a controlled substance, misdemeanor. Misdemeanor. And what are the states that are having giving out needles and safe places to inject themselves? Where's that again? I forgot. Uh, That's San Francisco. Going on. San Francisco does that. That's like city by city. Uh, I'm pretty sure Portland, New York, uh, Portland legalized uh, methamphetamine use. Get out. Yeah. How is you that can legal? Use, I, it, what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't You're go to. I don't go to Oregon anymore. Me. No. You don't remember that? No. It is perfectly legal for you to possess and use methamphetamine in the state of Oregon. How can a state so beautiful be so messed up? All three of them. Oregon, Washington, and California. Yeah. All screwed up. Unbelievable. But I will say this. You know how I know that uh, California is overtaxed? Because we had a near, nearly $100 billion budget surplus this year. They collected $55 billion more than they expected to in taxes. Holy shit. Yeah. How are you getting rewarded with that extra? I'm not. Hmm. Where's all that money going? Don't get me started, Mike. Don't do it. You're, Different I'm, show. Like, I'm right on the edge. Because I could go into how mismanaged this freaking state is and how... Okay, fuck it. We're going down this road. This is uh -oh. and this and this applies to the federal government because you know that f like forty billion dollars that we just sent over to the Ukraine, twenty billion of that goes to the military industrial complex. If you actually look at the bill, around seventeen billion dollars of that is earmarked for defense and general defense. General defense is all the is like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and all the defense contractors that have government contracts. We are not sending forty billion dollars to the Ukraine. We're sending about twenty-two, which is twenty-two too much. Well, we don't have any other issues in the United States that that money can help, so we might as well just send. Well, it over it's there. not. It's not like we have a trillion-dollar deficit. No, that won't help. All right. Anyways, any other good news? I finished the countertops. <laughs> okay, we'll get to that. But we'll get to that in the second half of the show. Yeah. All right. So is it my turn? Yes, go ahead, Mike, please. Take a breath. Woosa. Woosa. I got to get the pressure points. I, hit the... <laughs> I also had up. A, a slow week at work with only two days on the street, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. One of which my niece, Lexi, came up from Florida and, and did a ride along with me after, you know, the argument or the discussion with the chief. So that went well. She, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like how you just kind of glitched me. that argument. I mean, discussion. Yeah. Uh, she was with us from about 8 p.m. till about 1.30 in the morning. Uh, we were on the street till midnight and then we got lunch. And then my brother, Mark, uh, they... <laughs> They were at the White Sox Yankees game because Mark's wife Joanne is a, a Yankees fan. So, on their way back to his mom's house, my stepmom's, they stopped at the PD to talk with me and uh, Lexi. And I hadn't seen him in a couple of years, so it was nice to see him. And that was fun. Then we, we went and got lunch, and we had no good stuff to show her while we were on the street. We took a call for Geo of a. Uh, you know, uh, an ambulance call where we have to go to all the ambulance calls. Yeah. This was a woman who was vomiting blood and her back hurt. And she was at one of our hotels. So we went up there first and she's sitting on the bed. Brown panties and her pants pulled up to her knees, maybe. And she's just sitting on the bed, moaning and groaning. And I'm like, good God, put some pants on. Just get them all the way up. And my niece is like, why didn't she have her pants on? I'm like, why do none of them have their pants on? <laughs> none of them have their pants on. What is going on? You can't put your fucking pants on. So you know, I was thinking that we should have had her on 
But at the same time, like you said, that she wants to be a cop and she doesn't need the questions that I'm going to ask <laughs> right. yeah. brought up in a job interview. <laughs> yeah. And she has been a dispatcher for three years down there. So uh, for the county sheriff department. So That's she knows cool. the she job. Least, well, I mean, she knows the yeah. call's coming in. <laughs> yeah. She knows what the deputies are dealing with. Um, so that was fun, man. It was great to see her. I hadn't seen her in a couple of years and, uh, we might, I might get to see her tomorrow night, Monday night, because she said Monday or Tuesday, they're going to try and get together with me at one of the Mexican restaurants by my work. So, uh, looking forward to that. And then I did have a story I wanted to tell you about. Brandon just walked out. So I'll wait. I think he's going to go throw foam blocks at his wife again. I see him in his hand like last week. So I just sold now a message from Maraza Woodworking and Etsy, Maraza Woodworking on Etsy and MarazaWoodworking.com. I just finished a awesome bottle opener that you can see on both the Etsy page and the website. So go check them out. And here's Brandon. I wanted you to be around for this story. Sorry, I had to toss down the yoga blocks again. Yeah, I, I figured and I said that you were going to throw down the, the blocks to your wife and hopefully not hit her in the head this time. Yeah, no, I didn't hit her this time. Okay. I did almost slip and die on the yoga mat that's in here. <laughs> I don't know if the mic picked it up. I go, ooh, almost died. <laughs> no, I didn't hear it. That's <laughs> funny. Um, I'm going to bring up an old story real quick, and then I got two short news stories. Uh, an old story? Is yeah. Is there a new development in this old story? No, but I never got to tell you about it, and we were reminded. We were all sitting around talking at work okay. the other night. Old story, and, and go. About six years ago, when I first returned back to the police department, I think I was working the, that was night shift because it was like six in the morning. So we get a call of some suspicious vehicle or some car that was vandalized at the train station. It was one of those Ford transit vans, the small ones. Like a, like a real train station or like your hat kind of train station? Yeah, not the. Not this train station. At Not Yellowstone, the train but, station, right, but an actual commuter. Okay. We have a commuter train station in town. And at the time, some company was renting uh, spaces or parking like all their vans there because no one actually rides the train anymore. <laughs> so or very few people actually take the train line. They're actually thinking about closing down that line. So anyways, a van got vandalized, and I wanted to play a guessing game. Vandalized. Oh, boy. How do you think it was vandalized? So Go. Well, initially, I want to say spray paint, but it's probably not spray paint. Otherwise, I wouldn't be guessing. That would be a good one, though. Okay. Um, it's an old story worthy of being brought up again. Oh, I never used six, it. I never it, told it before. Okay. Well, I mean, being brought up, yeah. but it's a six-year-old story, which means that it stood out, which means it's something kind of out there. I'm going to say human fecal matter was smeared onto this van. Dude, you are so close. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the fecal matter in question was not smeared on the van. Okay. Okay. Someone went in the van. And took so, a shit? In, no, no, hold on. Inside okay. the van. Sorry, I'm getting really excited. <laughs> no, I know. They went inside the van. Okay. Some type of sexual pleasure took place while this person yeah, did. rode the emergency brake. Up his ass. Or her ass. I don't know. And then shit, which caused shit to come out all over the emergency brake handle and the whole center call. All right, hold on. We got to unpack some of this. Okay. Now, is this... Was the parking brake thing being up the rear the sex act? Or was this in addition to another act? I don't know. We don't have it okay. on camera. Someone okay, used so we, the so parking we don't brake. Know, so, we, so what we know for sure is that the parking brake lever was firmly inserted. It was pulled up. Somebody. It was in the upright, some would say erect position. Yes. Very good. And, and somebody sat on it. And we know probably went up and down. We, we assume. Maybe. We're assuming. Right. <laughs> was the culprit ever caught? Because I have I have so many questions that I would love to um, ask that person. No. That's too To bad. the best of my knowledge. Anybody collect best, DNA? Hold on. The best part for me was 
Danny was boss that day, senior officer. And he's like, we show up and he's not taking calls and stuff because he's senior officer. Yeah, you don't do that. And he goes, we need to photograph this. And I'm like, I looked at him and I go, yeah, I ain't doing that. <laughs> he wanted me to take the report and do the pictures. I'm like, nope. <laughs> so he did it. He had to do it all. I'm like, why are you taking pictures of that? He's like, what if we catch the guy? I go, I don't even want to know. I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not collecting a sample. I'm not taking photos. I'm not doing any of that shit with that shit. Don't want any part of it. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, yeah, we were all talking about that the other day. And I'm like, oh, that's a, I have to tell Brandon that story. So that's I thought, fantastic. I thought you'd enjoy that. I, yeah, I have so many questions <laughs> for that person. Like, I know. We'll never why? understand how and why that happened. I mean, a finger, maybe. I you break a handle? Finger, I, a finger, I understand. <laughs> right, and you break handle? Eh, that's, that's way too much. There. That's a bit much. I, it's a bit I much. I can't justify that one. I don't know the person who could, except this one person. Maybe they had an, an itch you just can't scratch, and it got a little out of hand. Maybe. I mean, I use a door trim frame uh, to scratch my back, like Baloo on a tree. Yeah. Maybe this guy needed that brake handle to scratch an itch up in there, up in there. Yeah. Because you don't want to get your hands all gross. I'm sorry. It sounds like there's a a dance show going on above me in the kitchen. I I don't hear it. Okay, good. We have wooden floors, and they're squeaking. Yeah, it's not coming through. All the mice from a Disney movie. (laughs) Uh, I was trying to Ratatouille. Right at two. Yeah. <laughs> so I have two quick news stories, and then we'll move on. I just okay. thought you would really like these. I sent them to you, I, but I sent them late, so you probably didn't read them. No, I was pouring epoxy. Okay. So this one, the first one is from Santa Rosa County in Florida. I Excuse did me, see got a beer this burp. One. I did see uh, this. Okay, Santa Rosa County, Florida Sheriff Bob Johnson wants homeowners in his county to know that it's okay to shoot an intruder who breaks into their home, and he wants in them fact, to... Im- it's preferred. Yeah, yeah. He wants them to improve their aim. Sheriff Johnson briefed the public on the arrest of a, quote, frequent flyer at a press conference broadcast uh, a week ago Thursday. The sheriff said multiple people called 911 on April 20th and reported a suspicious person lurking in the Pace neighborhood and breaking into multiple homes. About 40 minutes after the initial 911 call, gunfire was heard as a homeowner opened fire on the intruder who fled and continued to run through the neighborhood. Sheriff Johnson said Brandon J. Harris was apprehended when he jumped out the window of a bedroom in a home he'd broken into and deputies were waiting there for him. Harris had not been shot and came away from the arrest with just cuts from fencing he'd scaled. The sheriff said the homeowner who shot at Harris had not been identified, and he called on that person to come forward. Quote, I guess they think they did something wrong, which they did not, Sheriff Johnson said. (laughs) Quote, if somebody is breaking into your house, you're more than welcome to shoot them in Santa Rosa County. We prefer that you do, actually. We have a it's gun save safety so class. Much money. Yeah, <laughs> we have a gun safety class that we put on every other Saturday, and if you take that, you'll shoot a lot better, and hopefully, you'll save the taxpayers money. The sheriff said. <laughs> <laughs> he said he hoped Harris's felony burglary <laughs> spree would put him behind bars forever. "Quote: Some people don't learn. For us, he's job security. I mean, we deal with him all the time." Hopefully this time he'll go away and he won't get out. He basically chased a woman into her house and she had kids in her house and she locked the door just in time as he got to the door and started pulling on it. Hopefully he goes to prison for the rest of his life for this one. He had been arrested 17 times and was facing seven new felony charges after this arrest on Wednesday. And Florida law says, quote, a person who is in a dwelling or residence in which the person has a right to be has no duty to retreat and has the right to stand his or her ground and use or threaten to use. So I love that story 
God bless all these sheriffs in Florida. And that's where my, my niece is a you know dispatcher down in Florida. Yeah, she's going to be a cop. Be a cop there. Yeah, no kidding, man. And then the last one was... You got like the Kim's. mag dump guy down there. Evil can never be dead enough down there. That's right. And now this guy. Yeah, that's great. Some breaks in your him. house. Fucking kill him. That's right. We prefer Damn, it. Damn, dude. <laughs> he said they prefer you kill those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Not even like, hey, yeah, go for it. He's like, please. Yeah, please, please. do. In fact, come here. We'll show you how to shoot Take better. Take the class every other Saturday. We'll teach you how to shoot better. Man, and this Florida one... is wild, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is... um. Just uh, what the hell? This is justice. Uh, this next story that uh, my wife sent me. Uh, so, a South Carolina man dies of a heart attack while burying a body of a woman he killed. <laughs> a South yes. Carolina man died of a heart attack while attempting to bury the body of someone authorities say he killed. Uh, Officers I mean, from the fair is fair. <laughs> it's this is fucking great. Officers from the Edgefield County Sheriff's Office arrived at a home in Trenton on Saturday after receiving reports of an unresponsive man in his yard. Sheriff Jody Rowland and the county coroner David Burnett said in a joint statement, officers found 60-year-old Joseph Anthony McKinnon dead in his yard. But when investigating McKinnon's death and notifying next of kin, Authorities found the body of a 65-year-old Patricia Ruth Dent, quote, in a freshly dug pit. Authorities suspected McKinnon died of natural causes and that Dent's death was due to foul play. Autopsies performed Monday confirmed McKinnon's death was from a cardiac event while Dent died by strangulation. So, fucking great. <laughs> Guy kills her and then fucking dies of a heart attack trying to bury her. Poetic justice, right there. You can't right make there. this stuff up, man. No, I love our job. That's fantastic. It's a front row seat to a circus. All right, that brings us to. And sometimes you actually work at the circus. <laughs> yes, you do, or you have a friend that works there. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reorganizing my feet over here. All right, here we go. Reorganizing uh, your feet. I had my feet under my workbench, and I was pulling them back out because they started okay. to go, uh, what do you call it when they go numb? And I just knocked down Fall the... Asleep? Uh, they were falling asleep, and I, I ah. pulled out the uh, air hose from my... Knocked out the air hose from my compressor that's underneath my feet. Ah. So uh, we're going to head over to the Law Enforcement Memorial page at officerdownmemorialpage.org. Last week, we, we recorded on the 9th of May. And since that time, two officers have passed away. Rockdale County Sheriff's Office in Georgia. Deputy Sheriff Walter Jenkins. End of watch Wednesday, May 11th, 2022. He was struck by a vehicle. Deputy Sheriff Walter Jenkins was struck and killed at about 9.30 p.m. while directing traffic at the intersection of Highway 138 and Highway 212. He was transported to Grady Memorial Hospital in Atlanta, where he succumbed to his injuries. He was 54 years old. They do not have his tour of duty duration available nor the folks that he left behind. Harris County Sheriff's Office in Texas, Deputy Sheriff Robert Adam Howard, end of watch Wednesday, May 11th, 2022. Cause of death was an automobile crash. Deputy Sheriff Robert Howard was killed in a vehicle crash when his patrol car struck the back of a tractor trailer that was parked on the left shoulder of the Tom Ball Parkway near Spring Cypress Road. He was transporting evidence as part of a criminal case when the crash occurred at about 2 p.m. Deputy Howard had served with the Harris County Sheriff's Office for three years and was assigned to the gang unit. 
He is survived by his wife, two children, his parents, and his sister. He was 27 years old. And we don't have any canines this week. Yay. Yay. At least one good thing out of this week. Trying to find the positives and stuff. I have a positive story to end on. Is it the guy that saved the three-month-old baby? It is. Did you read that that I sent you? No, I just saw the headline in the link because I got it. I didn't see the rundown until I was clicking the Squadcast link. Okay. Um, So in Springfield, Massachusetts, uh, uh, two officers saved a three-month-old baby that was choking. I don't have the date on this, but uh, it says a typical road detail transitioned into a life-saving moment for two Springfield police officers on Monday. Once they sprung into action after hearing a mother cry out for someone to help save their choking baby. Wait. Approximately 2 p.m. They they sprung into action in you, Springfield? You see, okay. So that, whoever I don't wrote write that, these. Yeah. Whoever wrote that, bravo. Bravo. Uh, that would be Tristan Smith did. of the MassLive.com. That's the byline. Tristan Smith. All right, Tristan. Good job. I see you. I see what you're doing. At approximately 2 p.m. on Monday, officers Christopher Charles and Luis Rodriguez were working a traffic detail at the intersection of Bradley and Wilbraham Roads when a vehicle approached the work zone. A woman ran out of the car and screamed that her baby wasn't breathing. My baby. Officers immediately ran to the vehicle and aided a three-month-old baby girl. Police said the infant appeared to be pale, choking, and gasping for air. It was all caught on body-worn cameras, which you can see on YouTube if you go to the Officer Down Memorial page, or I will put a link for the story in the descriptions below in the podcast notes and on YouTube. The footage begins moments after Charles removes the baby from her car seat. He begins administering infant-based CPR to the child, which is completely different than adult-based CPR. So different. The officer can be seen placing the baby face down on his forearm, patting her back to help clear the baby's airway. And then Officer Rodriguez notified paramedics and checked in on the mother and another child that was present in the car. Less than a minute after the CPR procedure, Charles yelled, I'm good, she's crying, and the baby started to breathe again. So this is a, an amazing story, once again, of officers doing what we're that, paid to do. That only made headlines in the local area. Yeah, and, and it's May 12th is when it occurred, but luckily police1.com has this story. That's good. So that's awesome. Those guys are heroes this week, for sure. All right. All right. Time to the woodworking. Shift gears. Shift gears. Shift, go. I don't have a sound effect for shifting gears. That's okay. That's what you got me for. Oh, still doing the sad music. Don't hit the sad music. I didn't mean to pop that up, but I wanted to. I wanted to play the. Circular saw starting the wood, wood the, the for, circular saw. It's also an audio show, Mike. <laughs> Cheers. As I drink my Sam Adams Holiday Porter, dark and robust. A holiday porter in mid May. There's a holiday it's next aged. week, by the way. It's not aged. only my daughter's birthday on Memorial Day, it's actually a holiday. It is. It's a holiday that is often misinterpreted. Yes, it is. So, woodwork me. Tell me of your Mike, woodworking escapades Mike, this Mike, week. Mike, this isn't OnlyFans. <laughs> okay, so. You know those epoxy countertops I've been talking about forever? Like, since the beginning of this show? Yes. They're done. They're done. Oh, God damn it. I was going to play the clapping. Again, that is not sad. I was going to play the clapping <laughs> sound for you. 
Uh, uh, they have been poured. They are currently curing. And I feel a tremendous weight off my shoulders. It's so cool, so, man. That's so exciting. Wow. And we were talking it about it in the live, and you have given me confidence that I could do that. It is. So, I mean, it, okay, first of all, I got to shout out the company. It's Stone Coat Countertops, uh, StoneCoatCountertops.com. They're on YouTube. They have a ton of, like, tutorial videos. Um and I've been watching their stuff for years and I, you know, you watch them do this stuff and you're like, they make it, you know, they're, they're professionals. They make it look real easy and it comes out looking beautiful every single time. And I was telling myself, like, look, I can't set my expectations there, but if I can get it 75% of what they can do, if I get a solid C out of this, I'll be pretty happy. And legitimately we started pouring the epoxy at about four thirty this afternoon. We were done with it by six. That's like, fast. It, yeah. So, I mean, it was not hard to do. It was, I mean, and this is the first time I've ever worked with epoxy period. So first time having to measure it out first time having to mix everything and then put in the metallic powders, mix that, pour it, spread it with this uh, trowel, and then some of the other techniques that they have to, they call it chopping, to then, it what it does is it, it really bring, you use like a, um, a paintbrush. And all you do is you just hit it with the heel, and it makes like, <laughs> my wife was calling it the macaroni and cheese sound. You know, you're like stirring mac and cheese, and it's that really gross. Squishy. Yeah. Yeah. So once you get that sound and then you just kind of go in like random patterns trying to get all that stuff mixed up. And what it does is it kicks up the metallic powder and it creates these different swirls that are very organic and very natural looking. And then you have some other set aside that you mix some of the black stuff in and same thing. You mix that in there and it creates these highs and lows that you see in marble. So now it looks like for like legitimately about a tenth of the cost of a slab of marble, we have that same look in our kitchen right now, and it's, we're just waiting for it to dry. So you said you mixed it, and I was curious. I saw you pouring it into like a four-gallon bucket, mixing bucket on it your stories. It was a five-quart five five, oh, five five quart. Quart bucket. Did you use um, a drill with a, a mixer on the end? How did you yeah, mix so it? Yeah, so I have an, I have an old Ryobi um, – brushed drill uh that i had went down to the local hardware store put a got a paddle mixer and then just had that mix for two minutes and then poured it out but you can use like paint sticks they even tell you like you don't need a drill with a paddle mixer it just makes it a lot easier oh, you can use okay. just a paint stick it just you have to extend you get tired your, your mix yeah. time right and i mean dude, i would I just use the paddle just holding the drill up there sure um, you should have put yeah dude, oh, you can. It was, sit in a chair and mix super, it at your feet. Yeah. Well, I mean, we had the freaking room like, like a Dexter <laughs> yeah. kill room. Yeah. So I didn't. I didn't. I just figured, you know what? Every, everything's going to be on the countertops here. I don't want to risk dumping stuff everywhere. And even some of the stuff um, that like got on the wall was super easy to clean up. You just paper towel oh. it. Oh. Uh, over so, um, like it splattered up there. Yeah, like there was like a little bit of runoff, and it went down the wall. And I was like, "Oh shit!" And I was like, "Oh god, this is gonna be a fucking nightmare." And grabbed a paper towel, wiped it, and it was oh, oh that was easy. <laughs> so when you're pouring it, I was curious to how does it run to the end and then drop off onto the floor? So it's thick enough that as you're trying, so you the way I did it, the way I've seen in their videos, that you pour it just basically dead center, okay, of your project. And you take a one eighth by one eighth uh, square trowel. notch trowel, okay, and you just drag the material and spread it out, okay. And then what I did is I just got it close to the edge, and it it didn't really want to just naturally go over it, so I just kind of did all that, did my chopping, and then once I did that, it started to naturally fall over, and then you get so much epoxy on this brush that you just brush the edges, and it coats it. Oh, okay. So you didn't have a so, tremendous mess on the floor on the plastic. No, there's very little. Wow. 
It was very I'm little running. Really I was intrigued. really surprised. I was and really thinking surprised. This might be an, an option for me. It it for anybody if it, most let's face it, most of the people listening to the show DIY things, right? Mm-hmm. Have a little bit of know how. All you need zero know how. None. Like I said, just never watch the epoxy a day. Yeah. Watch a couple of videos. I'm neurotic, so I watched the same couple that dealt specifically with the kit that I bought like a sure. thousand times. Yeah. But it is very easy to do. If you have any know how in DIY stuff, or I think you have to also not just have a little bit of know how, but you have to have the want to or the confidence to to shoot your shot on it. Right. Um, but I've been joking the whole time. Like I'm equal parts excited and terrified because I want to screw this up. That's and, me on any project I ever start. Yeah. <laughs> Especially any big one. It's like, I'm excited, but I'm also terrified because right. You know, I bought, That's, you know, if, if I screw it up, I have to eat the cost and you know, I got to eat the cost on this either way. And I don't want to double eat the cost and then have to have it fixed or have it redone or, you know, or, you know, pay for a shitty laminate top and it yeah. just was going to be a nightmare. So it, yeah, I, I can't wait. I, the only thing that's left is once it's cured to cut out the hole for the sink, get that put in there and we're rock and so, roll. So will you have, do you have a sink template that you'll put on top of the cabinet? I have a whole sink kit. It kind of came with a faucet, everything. Yeah, I know. I mean, a template to cut it out. Yeah. A it's going to go in the, it's gonna go in the yeah, it's going to go in the existing hole, and I have underneath the MDF is the original hole for the counter. So, it, you know, worst case, if there is no template in there, which you'll I'm, cut up from all underneath. sinks, too, I can go from underneath and then drill my four pilot holes and just start connecting the dots. Okay. Now, you told me in about 72 hours it'll be completely cured. Yes. That is according to. What's on the bottle, 72 hours for full cure, 24 for very light use. All right. So once it's cured, unlike granite that you have to like seal once a year, is there any post-curing maintenance for epoxy? Nope. At most, they recommend putting a clear top coat just of as what? a protectant. Of epoxy? Of, of their epoxy. Oh, so, they so you would then pour that, that you on could put on there. Yeah. After 72 hours? The last hours? time I checked, they, they were back ordered. I think you could even do it uh, within 24. You could do it. It just has to be dried. Otherwise, okay. you're going to start mixing in stuff. Right, right. Are you going to do that? Uh, if it's not back ordered, the second they get it back in stock, I'm going to order it. But can you use any other clear epoxy as a top coat? I'm sure you could. Okay. Like total boat or I'm sure you could use total boat or liquid okay. glass or right. any one of these tabletop epoxies. Chill ice that I um, would Chad yeah, uses I would, rescued woods. Yeah, I would rather use uh their stuff. Sure. Just, I was just curious. Just because if, just because the amount of resources, how easy this was and like right. literally buy a kit, it comes with everything you need. I had to go out and get um MDF. rollers. Yeah, MDF and rollers. Rollers to roll on the, oh. the um the primer coat. Which okay. came with the kit. So, the Bondo you had to buy separately. Yeah, I had to get the Bondo. But that was because... So mine was... On the difficulty scale of their projects, mine was on hard. Because okay. I had the crappy tile. Most yeah, of so the stuff that they do is they'll put the primer on and then they will pour directly over laminate, existing stone, anything else. Um, oh. But with the tile because you have all the grout lines, you either have to completely fill everything and bring it level, right. which I toyed take with the off. idea, or completely take it off. And I'm so glad I took it off. Like, <laughs> it was I a can't, thousand times easier than what oh, I was sure. thinking. I can't pour over my laminate because my countertops are from the, the late 80s. So okay. I don't know, maybe I could. But Does it work? As, no, no. As you get towards the edge, this it's not just a square and it's not... Uh, a yeah. waterfall, it goes up and then over. It's like raised and you then down. You could still do it. Really? Yeah. You could still do it. You just drag it over. Huh. And then See, I, and then the thing I'm with gonna, the epoxy okay. is it itself levels as it cures. That's true. I tell you, if, if you got some time, go to their YouTube channel, Stone Coat Countertops, yeah. and just start 
breezing through their videos because I guarantee you they have something specifically for that. It took a while, but they did release a video that specifically dealt with my countertop because oh. they had one that was super old and that's where they built up a bunch of layers and brought everything to level. And then they did one that was the kit I bought, countertops that were like mine, a backsplash that was like mine and the grout that we're planning on using. So like I've watched that video like three times just in the last like day and a half. I think I'll most likely just take off the laminate, whole laminate countertops and put down the MDF like you did. Now, when you set the MDF yeah. down, how did you secure mm -hmm. it to the to the base cabinets? Brad nailed it. It's heavy oh, from the top. It's so it yeah, it's heavy enough right. that it's not going to really go anywhere. And then you add the weight of the epoxy on there, like it it's going to be right. pretty well in place. You didn't so put down um, caulk one sealant the, caulk underneath it, like so on top. No, not underneath it because there was a lot of spots on the counter that were just um, slats. They were like one by twos that it was sitting or like one by three, one by four. Um, so all I did was the one piece that was, or the pieces that were a little bit bowed and a little bit raised, pushed it down, Brad nail in, Brad nail the corners just to secure it. And then filled all the seams with Bondo, right. sanded that all done, put the primer on and then rock and roll. So you don't worry about where the Brad nail is. If that ever works its way, filled it with Bondo. No, so it ain't the weight out. of the countertop okay. itself is going to be fine. Okay. And if I want to go back later, I can screw it in from the underside. Right. That's what my first initial thought you would do. All right. Yeah. You got me so I think some of the I think some of the wood glue actually leaked out from where I um joined a couple pieces of MDF together with biscuits, which by the way, I got a biscuit joiner. Woohoo. And uh I think some of the glue kind of leaked out, so now it's glued to the existing counter so, <laughs> so ain't you'll never anywhere. you'll never have to change it again no i don't think anyone will ever want to go over it when we're all done no when you move to colorado the next people will be happy to have those countertops <laughs> so we were actually joking oh i don't know how much i was joking on our way to church this morning was you know because i've toyed around with the idea of like you know if things get really bad or if california ever does away with qualified immunity for for law enforcement, I'm done. I'm not going to risk everything I've worked my life no. for, right? No, to protect a segment of the population that is completely ungrateful for that. So I was like, I, I joked with her earlier when the plumber came out. I was like, dude, he makes ninety five dollars an hour. Like, I'm going to go be a freaking plumber. And after doing this stuff, like, I might just open up a countertop business and just make counters for people. That's not a bad idea, dude. I, Can you fly out was, to Illinois and do mine? Sure. I'll pay you twelve dollars. Sold. Giddy up. You can buy the plane ticket. Of course, twelve dollars okay, cool, on a plane ticket. <laughs> okay, sweet. And I'll throw in Portillos and Chicago pizza. Done. I'm in. I'm. I'm. I'm in. I can. I can start. Fuck it. Next week. Excellent. <laughs> I will. I will fly out from Denver for a day and help you All right. get, it, we'll get it done. <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's, that's, that has been all consuming, uh, for my right. woodworking stuff. I still actually, I have to get two flags done for my realtor buddy that I've okay. completely ignored because I've been so stressed out about well, the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, you have so good I, reason. Yeah. So I have to get those done. I have to get them shipped before we leave on Sunday. Oh boy. So I have two days. I have all the lumber. So I have two days to cut, stain. That's not a, that's not a good time. That's, no, it's not. I'm going to be working a lot. But the nice thing is I can do the unions on the laser. So I don't have to worry about sitting there and carving out 50 individual stars twice. Right, yeah. So I can just sit on the laser, let that thing go while I'm doing other stuff. And I'm thinking I might actually, now that I have the biscuit joiner, I might use that to align my stripes and possibly even the union. So we'll see. Did you buy a Ryobi biscuit joiner? I did not. Hmm. Um, Harbor Freight. Yes. Chicago Central Electric. Chicago Electric. <laughs> hey, they're all the same. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I have a Chicago Electric miter saw. It works, you know, it does what it's supposed to do. It's not good. It's... It's not any more out of square than a Ryobi or anything like that. 
and and all honesty, the blade def- deflection is not that bad when I slide it out. Um, so if you're everyone gets hung up on brands, but in all honesty, if you need the tool to do the job, if you're not going to use it a ton, or you're not sure if you are, get the super cheap one. Yeah, you might have to upgrade it at some point, but the thing. Is, but you'll you make money with it, it, which will pay for the upgrade. Yeah, exactly. That's like people get so hung up on like, oh, I want the 12 inch DeWalt sliding, or I want the Delta Cruiser, or I want the Saw Stop, or this or that. Like, if you really want to get into this and you really want to be able to do things that, you know, in a safe manner, and you're not trying to jerry rig stuff together, just get the cheap version, get the used tool. Get the Harbor Freight one because it'll get you started and then you it's just going to get you going. Upgrade it, from least, there. Yeah. And you can learn on it. And if you screw it up, like you're not sitting right. there like, oh God, I just wrecked, you know, I just, you know, tripped the saw stop break and now I have to spend, you know, $200 on a new one. Right. I don't know how much they go for, but yeah, they, that's about right. Anything with saw stop on it is expensive. <laughs> that's my next saw, by the way. My yeah. Whenever I saw. Yeah, whenever I go to upgrade my table saw again, I, I want a saw stop. I love but my Laguna Fusion F2. It's I a love fantastic my table saw. Um, but I want, when I get my retirement shop, I want a, like a five horsepower, uh, you know, two phase, 220 saw stop so I don't chop my fingers off. Because yeah. I'll be older. I just want the saw stop <laughs> because I, never want to, I don't want to chop my fingers off, but right. I'll never have the need for that, for something that big. So like well, I, the that's all I'll be the, doing is heavy big woodworking stuff when I'm yeah I know you're gonna have like a giant like custom furniture shop by that point and you're gonna need the <laughs> yeah. five horsepower thing yeah. I'm never gonna need the five horsepower thing in fact all in, in all honesty the table saw I have now is overkill but I like it it's yeah. shiny it's black it's tactical nice it's black and blue so I mean like that's so that's cool. awesome <laughs> Delta yeah okay I I love that thing I've had it for like. I think a year and a half, two years now. I absolutely love that saw. Even the like, even the stock blade it came with was not crappy. Eric from Valhalla uh, Woodworking is looking for a new table saw, and he had asked me my thoughts. But I'm he's looking for like a contractor saw, like you have. Yeah, and not it's a not cabinet a, saw. So well, yeah, no, I guess it's still cons- considered. Yeah, a unless it's contractor a contractor one, tall cabinet. So. But that, it's like in between thing. like the job site saw and the cabinet saw. Okay. So I think it, I think it is classified as a contractor it one. Works well for you. It's been doing great. I love it. Love the damn thing. The dust collection is horrible, but I mean I yeah. think that's just table saws in general. <laughs> Anything yeah, that cuts wood, the dust collection is not good. I want to add a second dust port on the side of my Laguna because it's got one at the bottom, and mm-hmm. then the hose. Uh, there's a hose that runs from the saw blade itself. Where the blade sits is a little well, and that's got a dust hose that runs down to the dust yeah. board. But all the rest of the sawdust that's in the cabinet doesn't have anywhere to go. So I was going to put a Y on okay. the outside. So I'd be sucking dust from inside the cabinet as well as from the blade. Uh, okay. All I have to do is cut the hole in it. And then I, you know, Radek has made a bunch of, uh, a bunch of upgrades to his same saw. Yeah. He's not afraid to drill into it and cut on the side, and I'm, I'm still terrified to cut into the cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but whatever. So, is that so how's all the, the uh, how's your kitchen island going? Good, not much. You keep calling it a vanity. I know. I'm I, in my stories. I keep saying vanity instead of island. I'm looking it right at it. Makes me right laugh. Now. Then I have to put on there. A no, you know, not. It's a vanity. It's not. It's an island. Not a vanity. Not a vanity. So uh, I, I had contact with my client this past few days. She said she actually does want floating shelves because she's got some tall stuff she wants to put on one side. And she's still trying to find the corbels because we're going to do corbels instead of legs. Okay. Um, her, her countertop guy said even legs weren't necessary. It's only a 12-inch overhang. But she has young kids. She doesn't want them jumping up on the countertop and hanging yeah. on it. So we're will. gonna do yeah, we're gonna do corbels. Probably five, two on the front, three on the back. But I can't finish framing out I can't put the face frame on it. 
because until she decides what size corbel she's going to get, it's going to determine the width, yeah. you know, of the face frame and stuff. So we're at the point where tonight I probably won't do anything with it. Um, it's ready. I have the Craig jig hole um, thing for the adjustable shelves. I'm probably going to do them tonight. I'll just drill all the holes in it. And then it's going to sit. I wanted to trim out the outside and the back. But yeah. until I get the corbels, I'm not going to know how wide each piece of trim yeah. will be. So I'm going to wait. So I'm not even going to do that. So what I'm going to do is the chief of the police department that ordered the big flag, who is her boss. The big ass ordered, flag. The big ass flag. He ordered a flag for his buddy who's retiring from fish and wildlife. So I have, it's all engraved and painted and stuff. I haven't glued it mm -hmm. together. So I think tonight I'm going to glue that up after I edit the podcast. And then it will be ready for me to make the engraved patch. I'll have to um, plane down some hardwood into a half inch thick that I can then engrave on, on the CNC. I've already designed the logo and incorporated it into Vetric V-Carve. It's ready to go. I just need to prep the wood for it. Nice. But at least I'll get the flag glued up. And he wasn't ready for it. He said he would wait until this um, island is done because he knows okay. this is a priority. But yeah. since I have dead time, I want to get the flag glued up at least. And then that yeah. will make me get the patch engraved. And then it's done. So what I think I might do is when I was out at Doug's, out the holes where I'm out in um, Idaho, he has he makes flags. And he... When I glue my flags up, I've got four, I think they're Harbor Freight, um, aluminum bar clamps. So the square bar mm -hmm. clamps. Yeah, I have the same and ones. I, I put them on blocks that raises it off the table, and mm -hmm. that allows me to, you know, to spin everything and put the clamps on it. And it's a big process. He has a piece of MDF, three-quarter inch MDF, that has, it's got to be maybe 38 inches wide, by 20 inches tall and then he just has a, a square fence on the front another piece of mdf and on the side and he puts his flag upside down on there and mm -hmm. then just puts a couple clamps on it to draw it in and that's okay, what I've he holds seen, it in I've seen place people use those yeah and then he puts his backings on yeah so i think i'm gonna make one tonight because i got three quarter inch mdf sitting around all over the place um it's heavy as i'll get out but instead of me setting up this whole thing and doing all these different clamps and having to use calls because i still use calls yeah i don't think you need them i don't know i've never done it with a jig like that but i don't think he uses calls but sometimes i actually need the call because of the wood isn't always flat right so yeah. sometimes one stripe goes up a little bit one stripe goes down a little bit so you put the calls on it and then you know what i've done is I'll clamp them out. down, and when I have something like that, I'll take my mallet and just tap it down. Yeah, and then tighten it a little bit. Persuasion. Yeah, I still do that well, even I'll, with the calls. I'll tap I'm it down, and then I'll put yeah. the backer on there, and I'll brad nail it in place. Okay. So I think I might whip up something like that tonight. But first is doing the podcast stuff. That's the priority, yeah. which unfortunately is going to take me hours. But uh, so well, yeah, I I had. Are you done? Almost. So the island's up, you know, still going. I had an emergency order for um, a bottle opener, an Iron Man bottle opener with a special engraving on the back. I screwed the first one up because the whatever the CNC did, it the was machine off center. screwed it up. Yeah, I don't. But I don't know if it was me <laughs> placing the probe in the wrong place. The, the no, 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 no. The machine so, screwed it up. Uh, the machine screwed it up, and uh, so I, I actually cut one, two, three, four, five, six blanks out of pine mm -hmm. and one out of poplar so i made the first one out of poplar because that's what i like to use for these bottle openers yeah but with the limited time i had to get it done it has to be at her house by friday i had no more poplar to to break down and i already had the six blank pine ones so i took one of them and i showed you this in the you know in the pre-show and i test engraved on here just to make sure it was set properly. And then like the outline of the helmet, and then I'd put the real one in an outline of the helmet. I actually made the new one out of pine. You can't tell. It's, I actually picked She'll a piece of know. pine. 
No, I had I picked a piece of pine that had no knots in it. Nothing was missing. It was perfect. I sealed it twice with um, polyurethane and then painted it. It came out smooth as glass, and it looks fantastic. It's just a lot lighter than the, <laughs> than the popular ones. But perfect. You know, I had no other... I, I had no other choice. It had to be done and sent in the morning. I'll drop it off at the UPS store uh, before I go to bed, and it should be there by Wednesday. So that's it. Um, Zach from Zach Builds ordered a T-shirt from me like Sweet. months ago. He, then he sent me a message like two weeks ago saying he missed my message, but he paid for the shirt. I can't find any payment from him. <laughs> On any of the, on my Chase app or my Zelle app or whatever, I can't find it, or PayPal. But I decided to wrap up his shirt anyways and just put an invoice in there. And then try shipping something to Canada. No. Even a T-shirt. Holy shit. Nope. First of all, you have to put all the customs information on there, what it is, what it's made out of. what. And I'm, so I did all that. Shipping, $19. So I'm like... I would you make know, $2. Printful, I don't have to worry about that. I would make $2 on the shirt. So I sent him a message. I'm like, if you want to pay for shipping, I'll include $5 towards shipping because that's what it usually costs me to ship a shirt. It's 5 bucks. Other than that, I, I'm not going to ship this thing to Canada. So I don't know. Printful. Send me that website address, please. I will send you printful.com. Thanks. <laughs> Are they... Is it like this shirt that is um, vinyl, or is it um, silk, silk screen? screen? Silk screen. One color. Oh, no. I think you can do multiples. I'm not sure. I haven't really tried to. Is it 50-50 blend T-shirt? I believe that's one of the options. Dude, there okay. are so many options for different kinds of shirts, and they're at different price points. It... I, I'm going to text it to you right now. Yeah, I'll set up an account then, tonight because... Um, like, check it out. It is seriously worth it. I have the press and everything here to do it. It's just time-consuming, obviously. Um, so I can, I guess, if I use them, the stuff I make at home will just be for me, for fun stuff, you know? But, yeah. Right, thanks. I mean, I have the Cricket Easy Press, and like that's for home fun stuff, for things that people are going to pay me for that I'm going to be responsible for making sure get out on time. I'm going to let somebody what's else the, do that. Yeah, what's the turnaround time on that? Fuck, I, I know. They get it done. With, so when you list it on Etsy and stuff? <laughs> fuck if I know. Dude, I'm I'm serious. I can't even tell you. Okay. Because they, when you link it to like your Etsy store. Can you also link it to my website? Yes. Okay. But they take care of everything. Like they do the Etsy listing. Okay. And you just click go. Or you click uh, to publish it. They won't publish it to your, like an active listing until you go in there through Etsy and actively make it active. Yeah. But everything's done. And they have the time window set up and then they meet that window. Like so, like Etsy doesn't really like it because they don't ship through Etsy. <laughs> well, I didn't so ship through Etsy, Etsy either label. today. Yeah, they, well, I, I looked at on... I know, but like Et Etsy will sometimes... Not put a hold on your account. It's it's weird how they did it to me. Like, hey, we're gonna hold like seventy five percent until we know like it's there because you're a new shop and you don't have a ton of sales, and we don't know if you're reputable or not. We don't want you taking people's num people's money, which I understand. You know, they have to protect the customer side of things from right. jerks. But it, when it, you it was interesting. I went on there to to get the label today to ship this bottle opener. Because you get a discount through Etsy. Yeah, so but much. Pirate Ship beat it and the time. No, no. Yeah. Through Pirate Ship, I used UPS, which beat the price and got it, is going to get it there by Wednesday. And the other yeah. one was later, as late as Saturday, and she needed it by Friday. So yeah, the Pirate only Ship reason again. I'll do, the only reason I use the Etsy shipping is for the convenience of it. It's there. And it's. Right. And Etsy likes it, so they'll give you a boost or they'll favor your account and stuff like that. For a new shop like mine, I need that. But once I reach your level of sales and your level of time on with Etsy, um, they can suck an egg. They can suck an egg. So I, I started um, already right now talking to you. I went to Printful. I started an account, set up an account. 
I said to grow my online business. I don't know what you chose um, as your drop remember. down thing. But um, next thing is to create a product template, connect my store, add products to the store, take care of billing. Yes. So, oh, it's and very, order samples. Yes. So those are I'm the gonna do our like, podcast T-shirts on there too. I see. I that's how I came up with the uh, the mug. I sent you a, yeah. a mock up of it. Same thing. Uh, I tried doing it with T-shirts and I didn't really like the way it looked, but I didn't really play with it that much. Okay. And I haven't been back on Printful in a while because I haven't been selling a lot of merchandise. So I guess people don't want me to go to WorkbenchCon. <laughs> you better I'm go. Still gonna, I'm still gonna go. I have to God. wait six months for you, the next bid so I can get you, the time off for it. You just. You just sold two flags. I know. Okay, that's part of that's two thirds of the payment yeah. for WorkbenchCon. Okay, put that shit away. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I still have to figure out flight. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't have to worry about lodging. We're staying at uh, Joey's house. Yes. We will hang out at the bar at night and just Uber back to Joey's and stumble inside. Yes, I may not yes. make it inside. Yes, we will. I'll drag you inside. <laughs> okay. We're going to keep Joey out I'll late, try to too. to be center so by then. The two of us can carry you in together. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yes, so are uh, great. That's awesome. Cool, man. I just, I'm going to set that up tonight. So anybody that's interested in any uh, Full House Woodworking t-shirts, hats. You set up hats, too, right? I have hats, t-shirts, polos. Okay. I got everything. Uh, so when I log in there, I'll see what I can add. It'll tell me what I can add to it. Dude, they have so much. You can do backpacks. You can do laptop cases. There's all kinds of okay. stuff. So I'll, I'll be uh, putting that gear up on my website and on my Etsy store. Uh, once it's up, I'll let, let the listeners know. And uh, for those of you that want podcast stuff, we'll, we'll have. I did one T-shirt through Sticker Mule. I liked the design and the look, but it's all cotton, which I don't like. So I think I might be able to, if this place does that on a 50-50 poly mix, we're in for T-shirts for the podcast as well. Sweet. All right, cool. Um, I think that's it, man. We should wrap it up. Yes. You can go eat, and I'm going to go eat. I'm going to eat my Panda Express. The wife came through. Oh, is it? Orange chicken? the right thing. Orange chicken and honey walnut shrimp. Giddy up, man. Have some for me. Half and half. Half and half. If someone wants to leave a message or a question, Brandon, what shall they do? Well, if you were to have a question for us, like David Franklin used to, David, where are you? We miss you. Calling you David Franklin. You can record your question and email it to handcuffsandsawdustpodcast at gmail.com. If you are afraid, you're shy, you can type up your question. You can send it to that same email, or you could send it in a direct message, DM, if you will, to Morazzo Woodworking on Instagram, Full House Woodworking on Instagram, or Handcuffs and Sawdust Podcast on Instagram. Now, we also have YouTube. Okay? You should also go to the YouTube, subscribe, little notification bell, enable those. You will find out when the pre-show is. Then you'll get the main show. And if we do any other bonus shows, who knows? You won't unless you ring the bell. So please There's do those things. Six viable ways to reach the show. And I'm still waiting for a show review on Apple. Well, we got to make one. me laugh. I just want to laugh. Make me laugh. One. Yeah. Did not make me laugh. That made me laugh. Make me laugh. All right. Make make me Brandon and Mike laugh, entertain you for two before hours a week mind. on this. That's right. The least you can do is leave a review. Giddy up. I like that. All right, man. So that's it. No show next week. Possibly the next week after that. Brandon's going to Colorado. He's going to quit his job and get a job while he's out there. Stay safe in the streets and in the shop. Tune in next time. Peace. You're going to get a job when you're in Colorado. If the sheriff's out there, I guarantee you I'll have a job offer. Seriously, know, look when uh, you're out there. Because Janet and my dad Janet are Reno? Kind of. No, no. My stepmom. <laughs> I love Janet. Uh, she's awesome. Uh, but they're friends with like the local sheriff there. Okay. So I guarantee you if he's at this graduation party for my sister, I, I will have a job offer. The only Don't question, work for Pueblo, Colorado. They no, suck. it won't be for Pueblo. It would be for like, I think like Douglas County. Okay. Um, 
But it, I mean, depending on pay and benefits, and if I right. have to go to jail first, it, if I have to go to jail first, I immediately am going to disregard it. <laughs> no, you can find a um, regular department to be a patrolman at. Yeah, so it, it'll be something to think about. Yeah, because I just because I looked at a because I get these random like usually quarterly um, where I can look at the value of the home through right yeah Redfin or, or, or whatever it wasn't it's not through Redfin it's through um oh who do we get our loan through or who do we go it's Veterans United okay um so they'll send me something and I can I can look it up and every time I look at it I smile because it has only gone up. <laughs> Right, of course. Um, I looked today, or no, it wasn't today, it was yesterday. As of yesterday, the current value of my home is $840,000. Holy shit, dude. I paid five fifty three. California. Yeah. Wow. So the, so the trick would be to sell the house before the market crashes. Yeah. And then to buy the new house after the crash. Right. <laughs> Like that's that's the the needle I'm trying to thread. Wow, because even in Colorado, like real estate's pretty high. Yeah, but even so, if I were able to walk away with like three hundred grand profit and throw three hundred down on a house like that, right? Then really extends my purchasing power. Yeah. So well, we'll see. I applied for another job last night. Um, some investigator at a hospital. I don't know. Yeah. Insur- Just, what, for like insurance issues? Yeah. And uh, stuff like that. We'll see. Uh, I or think like I a might DA have, investigator. Or I guess for you guys, like a state's attorney. I, I would thing. like to be a state's attorney investigator. I went to um, my FTO school with the Cook County state's attorney investigator. That'd be cool if I could find one out where I'm at. Not Cook County. Yeah. Collar County. Um, but I still hadn't heard back from Northbrook PD where I you know, had my job interview and I don't know if they, I'm on the fence about sending an email to the HR person. That's been the contact, but just reach out. Hey, just curious. Yeah. I forgot that. Um, the chief had said the whole process would take about a month that they would make their decision and then do background. And I don't know if they were going to do background before they offer the position to somebody. You know what I mean? Just get her to reach out. Cause at least then you're showing like interest in the job. Right. Definitely. Not- I, I sent a thank you the next day for the interview and stuff. Um, but I, I think I'm going to send another follow-up email and say, listen, I'm just wondering if you made your decision, you know, yeah. just to find I out because think- I need to move on. Yeah, because I, like, I have a buddy that just applied to be one of the um, RTOs at our academy. And he went down there just to see, like, to, hey, make sure the application got in and, you know, see if there's any study material he should be going over. And they were telling him, like, dude, you're the only one that's actually come by here. And it, it shows, like, reaching right. out and making sure and doing follow-up. And, I would swing you know, by. Showing that act of interest. If I was up during no, the day. Sh- showing yeah. up would be maybe odd. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I tell I you I sell today? flags? <laughs> Do I start today or is it right. uh, tomorrow? Too soon? <laughs> All right. I'll let you go. Um, All right. I'm going to go eat. All right. I'll talk to you during the week. Okay. You have to stop right, the buddy. recording so I can leave. Oh, I'm sorry.